Hi, my name is Yakov and this is Susanna. And we are Susanna and Yakov Darling Khan. We're the founders of a modern embodiment practice to bring spirit inspiration, bring ourselves into our body to discover who we are so that we can give what's inside us. That practice is called movement medicine. We are also authors of a book called Movement Medicine, and I have authored two books which are translated into Polish. One is Jaguar in the Body, Butterfly in the Heart. Which is epically, beautifully, <laughs> honest and authentic and inspiring, and I think you've done an amazing, amazing job with that book. That book is really the story of my initiation into the shaman's world, and I really wrote it because... I wanted for anyone um, who's beginning that journey to understand that this is a life journey. It's not like a weekend or a one experience that changes and then I become something. It's a commitment to a way of serving life and your community and the dreams of your community, the health of your community, and not just the human, but the, the natural the mm. the world around us, our environment, our relationships. And the second book I wrote is called Shaman, which is really a step-by-step -step guide to discover and embody day-to-day -day practical relationship with this super useful archetype called the inner shaman. Not to be a shaman for other people, but to use that human inheritance. It's part of our human inheritance to improve our capacity to connect to, Susanna calls it, our guiding star, and to be able to follow that, to know the power that we have inside us, to live our dreams and to, to make a difference in this world. I must say, in this moment, I want to thank you um, for how you've honoured me in those books without telling my story for me. That's, mm. that's coming. Mm. And you've done such an exquisite job with both those books. They're really authentic and real and useful. Mm. I, that, that's really lovely you say that because I, one, if you tell me that, you know me better than anyone and you know my ups and downs and my good sides and my less generous sides which you you share in the book I your do. your inner work with those yeah. the shadows yeah yes. and a lot of it's about that yeah for all of us it is that is the work actually is to recognize that we have egos and egos are very useful things they help us to do the shopping pay the bills um, deal with the day-to-day -day of our lives but they're not the part of us that should be leading, deciding I'm, I'm living because I want to be, I want to be a somebody. Um, the ego is the, Gabrielle was one of our teachers, Gabrielle Roth, um, the founder of the five rhythms. She used to say, I pray for you that your soul gets to out distance your ego and that your ego can be in service of who you are and really what matters to you. This is not just for weekends or for festivals. This is for Monday to Friday. It's for how you talk to yourself in the middle of the night, what goes through your head. It's for how you are with strangers, yeah. with partners, with your family, your parents, even if that relationship was difficult. With the taxi driver, with the bus driver, with the person who serves your coffee with with everyone it's really about bringing bringing prayer into action and uniting the, the world of the energetic where we say our prayers where we have these visions to what we actually do every day so the question that we've been asked to answer in this interview is so how is our work in movement medicine related to all the indigenous shamanism that is being so celebrated and 
and used and you could say appropriated but anyway it's coming into our world here in Poland and in the West very very powerfully particularly South American shamanism right now how is movement medicine situated within that context and, and what does it mean so I think we are so hungry for meaning and we're so hungry for a sense of the spirit that is not connected with the old religions but it's connected with our experience that gives us a sense of dignity and beauty and the mystery of life and that reconnects us with awe and that reconnects us with the adventure of being a spirit in a, in a body and with the natural world and because in the west these traditions of land-based, earth-based spirituality were really broken. Mm -hmm. We have been searching, many people have been searching in through other indigenous traditions. But the issue there is that those traditions are indigenous to their own lands and their own people and their own issues. And as our teacher Gabrielle Ross used to say, shamanism is indigenous to its own culture, its own people and its own time. And what that means is that a shaman knows the wounds of their people because they know those wounds within themselves. And through attending to their own healing, they learn how this issue, this broken, this disconnection, whatever is and can be healed. And then they bring that to their people. So movement medicine has arisen. It's indigenous to this place, this time, as in not particularly Poland, but the West and our disconnect, the industrial world, the industrialized world, absolutely, our disconnect from the spirit of life inside us, in the earth, with each other, the awe, the mystery, and it's our route back to give people an embodied experience of that aliveness of the universe inside them, meeting the universe outside with tools that grow from many, many sources, including what we've learned from other indigenous peoples, but we're not trying to copy them. We've really been given this blessing of teaching. We've been really instructed by the indigenous elders that we've worked with to use our experiences with them to reawaken our own knowledge inside us, our own instinct, to reawaken practices that come from this earth, this, but also are for now. For, because what we're experiencing now in terms of what's going on with our planet and in our people is distinct and it needs distinct medicine, distinct modality. So we draw from neuroscience and we draw from gestalt psychotherapy, which is my own background. We draw from what we've learned and been privileged to learn with elders from other indigenous traditions. And we learn from music. Mm. And we learn from our own experience, mm. and we learn from the practice of observing and being with our students over many, many decades. And this has brought into flower this thing called movement medicine, which is a shamanic practice that is indigenous to this time and this place. So, as Susanna was saying, our work is called movement medicine. So, what does that mean, movement medicine? Medicine. By medicine, we're talking about the healing power that is a, a, a direct included aspect of being alive. The body, the heart, the heartbeat, the capacity the body has to self-heal, to replace cells. The, if you look through a microscope at this body, it's all in movement. And... As Susanna was quoting Gabrielle Roth, one of our core teachers, she often would ask the question, what's the difference between a living body and a dead body if you put them next to each other? And it's very simple. One of them is moving and the other one isn't. Therefore, life is movement. And when we choose to give our physical bodies back to the beat, this means to dance. And I'm saying give your body back to the beat because the dance we're doing, it's not steps, it's not follow me, I'll show you how to move. No, this is about learning again, remembering, which is pretty quick. It's easy for us to remember, to feel the impact of rhythm and to let the life that lives the body then dance, become movement. 
And when we do that, which is, you know, we know about self-consciousness. We know how, like, oh, I remember I used to hate to dance, but I discovered it wasn't dance that I hated. It was feeling self-conscious. What movement medicine does is it helps you to put your attention in a different place, away from, am I doing this right? Does my body look good? Do, am I wearing the right clothes? Is my movement correct? Um, what's everyone else doing? What are they thinking? You know this internal dialogue? This is self-consciousness. Um, but it's possible to put your attention in a very different place, which is the sensation in the body. And when I do that and let the body be moved, and I don't care what it looks like, I'm just being moved, and I look around and nobody else cares either what they look like, I'm released from this rather fixed pattern of how I hold my body, how I breathe, how I live. Because the body, uh, it's, it's like the shape of our biography. But when we dance, we put all of our systems back into the river so that the history, our difficulties, our traumas, once the river is flowing and once I'm in that river moving, then all of this that is part of my experience and my ancestors and the challenges of being alive in a body on this earth, they start to move like um, water that's been stuck. As soon as you allow it to move again, it purifies itself, it cleanses itself, it heals itself. That's how movement is medicine, on a physical, emotional and mental level. And it's not just about healing the past. It's also about really remembering that you, I, all of us are naturally creative beings. We're creating our perception, our story, our way of interacting. And either we continue to do that unconsciously or in the ways that we've been taught by our society, by our families, by the culture, or we consciously take hold of that creativity and apply it to bringing what really matters to us from the state of dream and imagination into this world, into our lives, so that what really matters to us is central to how we live, how we relate, how we give, how we receive. The movement is medicine because it brings our body, our heart and our mind together. And once these are connected, something else happens. Somebody said to me yesterday, movement changes everything. So I think something that is really universal is the longing to be seen and welcomed and received by your community. We are social animals. We are the most profoundly social mammal and we need each other. And that's not a sign of weakness. That idea is really an import of individualism. It's, it's simply how we are. We grow together. We grow in the light of each other's attention. Like plants grow in the light of the sun, we grow in the light of each other's love and seeing. And Maladoma Soma, who is a West African medicine man, he talks about when you come back from a deep healing experience, a deep healing, cathartic, letting go, it's very important that you're welcomed by the village, he calls it, that you receive this really warm, they call it a dog's welcome, like, like you know how a dog is so happy to see <laughs> you, that you, you give each other this dog's welcome, and that that seals the, the healing. And in movement medicine, we work with a very, very clear way with voluntary proximity and how to give each other this safe, safe and very respectful seeing, acknowledgement, welcome and a sense of harbour. And what's extraordinary is that even people who don't think they need that, when, like myself, I think, <laughs> oh, I'm fine. 
But when I'm given that, a whole nother level of opening starts to happen. And I discover how much more adventurous I can be, how much more creative, how much more individuality can flower that then supports the community and a healthy community supports its individuals to blossom. And then the individuals who are blossoming into their strength support the community to grow. Maybe I and can then yeah. Come keep, in from and that. then together so much, so much is possible. Yeah, I think Thank you, Susanna. I think I just wanted to pop in here and just talk you talked about individuality and community and I think um, in the modern world people are we we are focused very much on the individual who I am what I want what I need um, it's we call it me myself my royal eyeness or me itis yes or me itis and it's not that being being an individual is a, a beautiful part of our human evolution but we can only really be individuals when we're in the reality of the interconnected nature of life on earth. We are part of this biosphere. We cannot live in little hermetically sealed units and expect to be healthy physically, emotionally, mentally, or the environment. So in the dance, we are encouraging people to be in their individual dance like I'm in my dance, but I'm not eyes closed. I'm not in a trance which is disconnected. I'm not separate. I'm not separate. I'm in the entranced with the fascination of my own dance, with my eyes open, aware of my circle and aware of you and you and you and we. And I'm in my backbone and I'm aware that there's a greater power. There is. I, my dance is part of the dance. It's part of our dance and it's part of the dance. Yeah. Yeah, because we are interconnected. So if you ask, well, if movement is medicine or movement medicine, what is the medicine for? What is the sickness that it's trying to heal? And the sickness that we feel is at the base of our modern suffering, and that includes how we are destroying the biosphere that we're interdependent with and we're dependent on and that yeah. we're part of mm -hmm. is the is disconnection. Mm -hmm. Disconnection from our bodies, disconnection from our hearts, disconnection from our souls, disconnection from each other, disconnection from the natural world and disconnection from the great spirit. Which is and the awe of life. This what's sacred. Yeah. What is sacred. What in does all sacred of it, mean? in the inner and yeah. outer world. And movement medicine helps us to re experience that. And then through that, everything can happen. And as Maladoma Soma says, individualism is the enemy of community, but individuality is inherently part of community. And um, when I read these words, I'm like, absolutely, that's what we're doing. And that's our modern, that's our modern real, the focus of, we call it the, like a Zen koan, like a, a, a real question, which is fascinating and difficult to answer is how can I, be myself and connected really both at the same time and that's what movement medicine we have practices which help us to find through the body the way of that becoming a simple not a thought but an actual experience i am myself i am here and i'm with you i'm part, and, of, and part of this yeah. and yeah. this this is a miracle <laughs> yeah, so we've been talking about the effect of, I, I mean, I'll just be brutally honest about it, the way that the church attacked the indigenous traditions of Europe before they took that particular um, horrific, tragic story on the road and imposed it on all the other um, indigenous communities of the world we had in Europe. In all of these countries, we had our own traditions that were based on relationship to the, the cycle of life, like the earth, the crops, the planting of seeds, the seasons, the, the natural, the turning of the moon, the tides, all of these um, very 
natural, powerful cycles that our bodies know, but our modern world is is completely separate from. We move on a, a digital time, not a not an organic or a, a body time, and through that we lost a direct connection to our ancestors, to our land, and this leaves a big gap behind us where um, in, you might call it a design, there is a direct relationship with my people, our people that have their hands at my back. I am, I am the physical manifestation of what they dreamed. I, their smiles are in my face. Their tears flow from my eyes. I'm made from this material that experienced what they experienced. And if I'm not awake to that, there are so many losses for me in terms of my sense of place, confidence in who I am. And movement medicine, again, our work is designed to bring us back to primarily, first of all, this land, the land of my body. I'm indigenous to the land of my body, first of all. Secondly, through that, I'm connecting to this living earth that I'm sitting on. Through this body, this body is earth. So the earth of my body, the body of the earth, there is a connection, there is a strength. And once I'm listening, then um, I can, the intelligence, we call it the unbroken, this movement of life, this intelligence of the unbroken that is the seasons and the cycles of the moon and the the healthy movement of life. Um, this unbroken within us connects to the unbroken around us and we have enough strength to begin to remember. Remember in English means to put back together um, our connection we call it across the arc of time our ancestors the present our descendants whether we have children or not we have this place our hearts are beating now at some point I will be an ancestor and the most important question that I ever received about that about my ancestors is Yes, it's important to know them. That's really important. And to honor them, to thank them. They gave us life. Yeah. So it's very important to... It's healthy. It's good for our health, our mental health, our physical health, our emotional health, to be aware of the generations before us and what they lived through, what they learned. It's actually in us. It's part of our physical and emotional and mental inheritance. We have their stories in us. They live in our cells. They live in our structure. And that's very important to recognize that this body is its the gift of life, of the source, the mystery, and my ancestors and this body therefore will become if I so make it a gift for our descendants and this was the question I was asked by my ancestors at a certain point like Yakov, it's wonderful that you pay attention to us and you listen to us and you remember and you put a, a, a plate out at the dinner table for us sometimes to remember us and you have a little altar, an ancestor altar. This is beautiful, but the more important and the most important question for you is, what kind of ancestor will you be? When I heard that, I was like, ah, yeah, thank you. That's the point. That's the point. <laughs> So I've heard people here saying that they only recently realized they had ancestors. 
and that they are indigenous actually to this land because somebody said there was a feeling of shame about having ancestors. And uh, this reminded me of an experience I had in Zimbabwe where I was working with uh, tribal people who have very strong Christianity. And we went through a movement medicine ceremony in which I was inviting them to get in touch with their ancestors. And this had to be very, was very sensitive because the Christian church had really brought also similarly a sense of shame about ancestor worship or being connected with the ancestors. So I actually have a strong relationship with, with Christ, though I'm not Christian. Um, so I was able to really hold that in a respectful way for their Christianity, but at the same time to include the ancestors. It was so profound to work with people whose ancestors had a very strong sense of ancestors. And for the first time, they're awakening the strength inside themselves. So I was really interested to feel a resonance of that here, of remembering the power of our ancestors and um, recovering somehow from the shame story about needing and wanting to remember and honor our ancestors and to call on their strength. Perhaps it's just worth adding that when we talk about the church or Christianity, we're not talking about the spirit of Christianity. We know many people who really love their Christianity and and it's the dogma. And they're amazing people and, and they do amazing yeah, work. Exactly. Service. But it's, it's the dogma that was has been associated with that uh, religion rather than the the spirit of Christianity, which is something else, you know, love thy neighbor, good idea. Um, but love thy neighbor does not equate to going into somebody else's country and telling them um, how to live a sacred life when they're living in an unbroken lineage that goes back much longer than Christianity. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> so is it possible through movement practice to bring the knowledge that we've lost that's somehow somewhere in ourselves back into consciousness and absolutely it is once we've really made the link between our consciousness our hearts which is the bridge really the emotional bridge with which bridges the, the world of spirit and the world of manifestation so the world of consciousness and the body, physicality, once we include our hearts and these things that become integrated in our movement and in our experience, then we open what in Family Constellations world is known as the knowing field. And things become knowable and experienceable, we're able to experience, that we haven't been able to access in another way. And it's both ancient knowledge, but it's also emergent knowledge that is emerging in this time. Um, it's kind of systemic. It's like we connect with a much bigger field of knowledge. And it's very mysterious how this works, but it becomes like a, a cell, like a bee. One cell within a whole colony, that there's this arising of consciousness or knowledge of what is needed now, which is in some ways similar, but also probably different than what was needed in the past. That's very current as well. And how people access this is very individual, but it is to do with bringing the imaginal world and the imagination and consciousness and heart and body and movement and music together and community. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah. You you talked about the knowing field that is accessible when we are connected, body, heart, mind, all connected. Roots, trunk, branches. When we are connected, north, south, east, west, center, at the center of our circle, grounded rooted, present. Once we have that sense of structure, of 
ritual space, like how to construct in a safe way, uh, in a reliable way, a ritual space. Um, in that space, uh, you can absolutely step back into the consciousness of your ancestors and who lived through those ways that we have forgotten. And I think it's very important what you said, Susanna. We, we, it's unlikely we'll receive the totality of that. One, because it's, it's, it's gone. But the spirit of it, definitely, we can receive. And then to trust that we can honor that original spirit and through who we are now, that we are wishing to reconnect with that, we can shape the ritual, the dance that is now, that respects what was, what is, and what's coming. So that talks about honoring the old, the tradition, the structure, the originality, and then honoring the time that we live in, which is not the same. The, the challenges are though some of them are universal, like we live, um, we discover, or we don't, who we are, and then we die. That's kind of universal. Yeah. Um, nevertheless, the world is different. And how, how we bring rituals which are rooted in the past and absolutely um, radically relevant. relevant to the present uh, so that we then can pass something on. In that way, we mend that broken connection. We mend it, and we can. And that's one thing I'll say about that, that I've learned recently is uh, it's very important not to hold your ancestors when you meet them in what you know about them, like the stories you know about them. Because, um, in my, like, my ancestors, many of them died in the Holocaust on this land. So often when I began my connection work with my ancestors, I saw a lot of um, victims of brutality and oppression, and I felt the heaviness of that. Um, but more recently, um, Susanna held a space for me to visit with them again. And they were really angry with me. They were like, like, who the hell do you think you are, Yakov, to determine who we are through what you know about us from the past? Like, you think we're the same? This like, was one moment. This was one moment in our whole existence. And then they showed me. And these were, these, this was a group of men, particularly in this instance. Uh, they were tall strong, upright men, and they said, we were men of God, not dogmatic, just connected. We were men of God. And when we died, we died with God in our hearts, with no fear. So don't you dare feel sorry for us. Don't you dare presume to feel sorry for us. I was like, thank you. And, you know, I even I can feel like the, like, the shift in my body from, oh, my ancestors, to my ancestors. They lived and they died. So, you got the dates. Initiation. Yes, I have. So, um, thank you. Thank you. And uh, our warm greetings to all of you who get to see this and hear these words and um, please receive this warm invitation if anything that we've said um, moves you to movement we we are coming to poland regularly we'll next time we'll be here will be may the 26th to the 1st of june and together we're teaching In 2024 yes yes <laughs> In 2024 yes exactly to teach a, a workshop called an initiation, which is 
it's a real, sometimes we call it the washing machine um, because we go all the way back to before your beginning and all the way through your life and forward to your eventual death. And the idea is to really bring the material of your life and experience um, to know it not as a problem, as like a, you know, that image of carrying the rucksack of our past on our back, but rather this is medicine, strength at our backs and a sense of life's invitation for us to create, to give. Uh, so that we can die well with smiles on our faces going, yeah, we did it. It's a beautiful, intensive, experiential, cathartic <laughs> workshop. And we look forward to seeing some of you there. Thank you. Yeah.